Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'm going to be unboxing and setting up one of these, a Seed Studio Millimeter Wave Human Detection Sensor Kit. Millimeter Wave sensors are currently considered the gold standard for detecting the presence of people in rooms, which is very, very useful when it comes to smart home automations. You can use that information to maybe control some lights or adjust the heating, for example. They're typically very accurate and most models can track more than one person within a room at any given time. Now, due to their high accuracy, you can get very clever with your automations reacting to the position of somebody within a particular area of a room and some of them can even detect somebody falling over. I even think some of them can detect and measure human heartbeats. For me, I currently have one of these, which is an Akara FP2. That's mounted on the wall in my kitchen and I use it to wake my kitchen control tablet when somebody essentially stands in front of it. I have a couple more automations in mind for that particular FP2 now that I know how accurate it actually is. Whilst the FP2 is a very powerful unit, at more than £80 each, if I were to install those across my house, it would get very expensive very quick. However, as part of a little experiment I'm planning to run related to solar gain from my office window, I find myself looking towards a millimetre wave sensor again. One of the inputs into my experiment will be whether or not I'm in the office um, at any given time. And a millimetre wave sensor is a perfect piece of hardware to give me that information. Now, I didn't want to go out and buy another FP2. This is just the box of the one that I have. So I had a hunt around and I came across this unit from Seed Studio. Now this is their millimeter wave human detection sensor kit, which I showed you earlier. And it offers some very unique features. The first one is that it's powered by ESP Home, which means it'll be fully open source. Secondly, it's entirely local, so it just uses your local network. There's no cloud server involved. And thirdly, it integrates neatly with Home Assistant because it uses ESP Home. Now, those three things are kind of the holy trinity of smart home gadgets for me. This was a bit of a no-brainer for me, especially after I saw the price, which was basically $27. I ordered two, and even after I added shipping, the total cost, once I'd converted into pounds, was about £27 each, which is roughly a third of the uh, Acara FP2. Now these two units have been sitting in that cupboard behind me for a couple of weeks but with some good weather forecast I thought it was about time I took it out and got it all set up so that I can start recording that data straight away. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. Okay so here we have the box so let's open it up and we'll see what's inside. So add some packaging. Then we've got just some, what looks like some information, just describing what the unit is. And we have the unit itself, to pop it out. Okay, so it's a little bit chunkier than I was expecting. It's got a USB-C port down on the bottom. Some sort of a little, that might be an LED perhaps. There's a couple of uh, little holes here, maybe there are lights on the side. And then in the kit we just have a USB-C, yeah, USB, USB-C cable. A couple of screws and little, little offset, offset mounts or little mounts. Two what appear to be stickers. And then a teeny tiny screwdriver, which I'm guessing is for whatever's in here. So there's obviously, there's no buttons or anything visible on the box. It looks quite nice, it's very unassuming. Um, there's no branding of any kind on it. So uh, I don't know how to open it. 
That doesn't appear to be an obvious way to get the cover off. So that's something I'll probably need to look up. Um, I have a USB-C cable here plugged into my PC. So why don't we just power this up and see what we do next. So to get started, the first thing we need to do with the unit is power it up. And then according to the documentation, it will create its own Wi-Fi network. We'll then configure the device to connect to my own Wi-Fi network, after which it should then present itself as an ESP Home device in Home Assistant. So let's start by powering the device up. Haven't a clue. If that's powered up. There's no lights. There's no indicators or any kind. So I've got my iPad here. So let me just check if there's a Wi Fi network. Yep. So if we look here, we can see there's a Seed Studio Wi Fi network. So I'm going to click on that. And then if we browse to that IP address, 192.168.4.1. We can see all the Wi-Fi networks that's available. So I'm going to go to my standard IoT and then I will key in the super secret password. And you'll see a little message now that says the ESP is going to try to connect to the network. So that step, that step is done. And I'm going to jump in now to Home Assistant and I'm in the settings dashboard of Home Assistant. And I've got ESP Home here. So if I jump in here and ta-da, the actual unit now has been discovered, which is great. So let's click configure and it says, do you want to add the unit? And I'll click submit. And that's been successfully added. So now I'll choose office. And that's that was that was easy okay that was very easy so let's jump into the entities now and what I'll do is I'll get rid of the webcam so that's been added in now so I can see we've got uh, sort of everything's kind of unknown but there's lots of sensors added in uh, which is great so if I look, so let's say I just open up one. Unfortunately, it's all unknown at the moment. So I clicked this button here, which is labeled module restart. And once I click that, all the parameters jumped into life. So I've got some body movement parameters. I'm not sure what existence is, motion distance, motion energy. So if I just run my hand over the unit, I mean, there's some changes, but so it does have presence detected, static distance. So obviously, I can tweak some of these values to probably make this a bit more area detection. Yeah, and have a play around with that. So simply put. That's all in position now, and I probably could do updating the firmware. So why don't we have a look at updating the firmware now, and we'll see what's involved in that. So I'll jump over to the seed guide. It's essentially saying here that we can run to this, jump to this page here, and then it will automatically connect to the device to update. So why don't we just give that a go? So I'll click the button. Okay, so it's popped up. So I'm connected, so I'll click connect. Now I've got a pop-up here, but I've no compatible device. So that feels like a bit of what is flash the firmware simply click so I don't have anything. Now this might be a case where I have a cable that doesn't support USB-C data so I'm going to use the cable I got with the device rather than 
the uh, USB-C cable that I just pulled out of the drawer. So let me disconnect this one. And plug this cable in. Ah, okay. So you can immediately see now that that's popped up. So I'll click that. Oh, no ports. Let's cancel that. And we'll try this again. And it's connecting. And I want to do that. And I just want to say that says 2023. Interesting. Okay. Because if we jump back to Home Assistant, this is actually telling me. Oh, okay, so the firmware is dated January 22, January 22nd rather, but it's actually firmware 12.7, so which version? So this is installing 12.3, so that's actually an older version of the firmware. Why is it, put? that's a bit silly, so we're going to cancel that. Or we have option two, which is to download the firmware directly and then use a web tool to deploy it onto the unit. So we'll click this link and we can see here that we're actually, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on a much, and you can see here, this is a much more recent version, which is 12.21. So we'll click the download, click the bin to download it. And then we'll hop back here. And it says to open the ESP home web tool, which we'll do now. And we're, as we're already connected, I'll click connect. So that pops up there. I'll click connect. Okay, so we'll select the bin file I just downloaded and I'll click install. Now it started installing. Okay. It hasn't updated, but that might be an issue with Home Assistant and ESP Home. So that's been a very quick run through unboxing the Millimeter Wave kit. The setup experience was very painless. It only took a few minutes from plugging the device in to having it appear in Home Assistant. So I'm very pleased with how easy that was. It's too soon to comment on the unit's overall behavior and reliability as I've only just plugged it in, but I'll keep an eye on it over the coming days and weeks. And hopefully I'll do a follow-up video once I've had some experience with how it behaves. I will now put this little unit just under my monitor here in front of me so I can now start tracking whether I'm in the room or not. And that will feed into my solar gain experiment, which I'll be doing a video on in due course. I'm just waiting for some actual sunny weather before I can start to take advantage of that. So I'll wrap it up there. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you have, please do click that like button. If you have any questions or comments about anything in the video, please do reach out, just use the, the comments section and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Please do check out some of my other videos. I do videos with smart home tech and home heating, amongst other things. And if you like any of those videos, please do consider subscribing. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.